This is the Political Brown Kid, and I am back again. And, of course, I kind of did a video on this already, but I want to kind of revisit the subject. I didn't kind of go this route, but it was on this topic. And it's just been really, because I've been having some interesting conversations with particular individuals. And, you know, when I'm dealing with, of course, my people, that it would be black people, um, it never surprises me certain answers that I get from them. And I can kind of tell sometimes, too, where they are either socioeconomically or where they are with financial literacy. Um, you know, where they where they are based upon how they answer certain questions. So what I mean by that is this. I had a conversation with um, a, uh, someone before in an associate that I know of. Um, probably more than that. Um, and me and this guy was talking and they were kept talking about, the, we were talking about student loans and, you know, no surprise. They're all in favor of student loans being written off. And they came up with all of these reasons why talking about, um, uh, his reasons were just kind of all over the map, but they're just in favor of all student loans just being wiped out. And when I say all, I mean entire student loans. And of course I'm going to feel some kind of way about that because, when I was in school, well, of course, my parents paid for my schooling. So I, I know some of you guys are going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, there you go. But hey, my parents saved money. They planned, they saved. And that's what they did. But they financially had to take the hit because that money that they were saving for years and years, they could have done something else with it. But people want to take out loans and then they want to cry and complain about they didn't understand the terms of the loan. Or they want to cry and complain about certain things. Now, my thing is, if the president and the federal government wants to alter the terms, interest rates or whatever, okay, fine. But my thing is, if you've taken out a loan, you should pay what you owe. Um, and again, I've already come up with two things for caveats. I think that, you know, like certain professions, particularly teachers, should be written off because they're providing... Um, you know, education to the youth, especially those teachers that are going to work in the public school system because the public schools are funded, you know, um, they are funded by Americans, but it comes through federal dollars and then state and local dollars, right? So my thing is, since they're tied to the government, then they should be the beneficiaries of having, you know, student loans paid off um, or, you know, their, their loans paid off. But everybody else, if you're working at a private school or you're doing something else, I don't think your loan should be written off. But the individual that I was talking to, this individual has had several um, bankruptcies. This individual has had, um, you know, just bad financial finances, doesn't manage their finances well. And so I already knew off the bat that, you know, the particular stances on particular subjects this person was going to take because they can empathize with being on the other end, with being destitute, not having money, not managing money well. But just because you don't manage money well doesn't mean that the government needs to take care of you. That just means you need to chalk some things up as life lessons and keep it moving. We're not writing off debts. But this whole conversation, I just kind of wanted to give that lead in story but there are just certain reasons how I know that our folks, certain black folks, and what I mean by that, once again, those black folks that are probably there in a low socioeconomic bracket, or they may be in a middle or upper, or, you know, they may be in any of the economic brackets, but they went through hardships before in their life. And, you know, they can empathize with, you know, being the poor and destitute and so forth and, you know, poor money management. And typically, like I said, they're, they're going to side with the Democrats because, you know, Democrats um, practice selective inclusion. And so what I mean by that is this. The Democrats will let you say, OK, if you're if you're trans, you know, be who you want to be. You know, if, if you want to be called a woman, then we're going to call you a woman. If you want to be called this or that, we're going to call you this or that. If you want to be a man and you want to change to a woman and you want to play in women's sports and knock them out in women's boxing, go for it. If you want to be gay, we'll include you. You know, they're all for diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. I am too, to an extent, but from a different angle, I'm not going to touch on it in this video. I'm going to do a separate one because that's a deeper dive. What I'm not in favor for is like contrived 
um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like, you know, like how you see with a lot of these Disney movies or a lot of they do in Hollywood. They, well, particularly, you can look at um, Wakanda Forever as being one where they just said, we want to just show women kicking ass and, you know, the men, you know, you know, because it's, it's the feminism era, you know, we're going to make this all about the women, you know, or, you know, we got to put a handicap. Asian person in in movies because it's to show that we're diverse and then we got to put a blind Jewish person into a movie because you know it's never they're just going a little bit too far with I think those DEI diversity equity and inclusion programs but again I think that it should be naturally done and I can talk about that off topic but Democrats like to be selective inclusion they're willing to let trans people be trans be a man and transition to a woman but then they draw a line at other particular things then they say oh well you know if you're in love with your horse or your dog that's not acceptable but for you to be in love with you know if you, if you want to just you know, be a nine-year-old boy and you know you're not even gone through puberty yet but you want to call yourself a girl that's perfectly fine so they have their boundaries but my thing is you know, if you're going to allow one thing, then you possibly have to start allowing in a lot more other stuff that you may or may not like. And once again, I'm not for bestiality, but at the same time, you can't say that one group is not doesn't have a psychological, you know, um, issue. But this other group, the or psychological and or immoral or moral issue, but this other group does. The other thing, too, that Democrats do is they typically accept victim mentality from anyone. If you notice that, and once again, I'm going to say this, blacks had a right to have a victim mentality. You know, even to this day, I'll say that. I don't think that you should wallow in it. I think that it is fine to acknowledge that these are the wrongs that are done to us or that continue to be done to us because we know that they're still not setting the bar properly and have not made black people whole in America. Um, but I don't think that it's cool to just wallow in it and then just kind of, you know, think that you don't need to do anything and just kind of use your victim status to get other people to do actions for you or to give you benefits. I still think that you still need to put in the work to show that you um, deserve whatever it is you have. But I will say this, I am for like reparations. I am for, I think that, that, that there is a point where blacks in this country need to be made whole, but at some point you just can't continue to be, you know, use the victim card. Um, now women have, now, because they've seen the effectiveness of, you know, the black movement. And I always told you, it's always white women. You know, as soon as the black movement gets started, and they've been doing this since Martin Luther King. When Martin Luther King had to march on Washington, the white women came in and said, well, we want to be included too. And then they added the feminist movement onto that. Fast forward to every time you see the black movement kicks up and gets into gear, George Floyd comes out, the black movement, you know, rouse up again you know, and organizes again. And then, you know, Black Lives Matter starts. You have a bunch of other black topics and black issues become to the forefront. And then what do you have? You have white women coming in, talking about how they're not paid. And we're talking about white women in Hollywood, too. We're talking about white women that make tens of millions of dollars, and they're talking about they're not paid properly. Katniss Everdeen, starring in, she starred in, what, four, four movies, Four series, right? Um, and, you know, all of these women are saying, these white women talk about they're not paid properly. And they, they're not even looking at it to say, damn, well, we, even us being at the bottom of the totem pole of whiteness, we still make more than, you know, probably Chris Rock or, or any regular name, big name um, star. They make more than Terrence Howard. No one, they didn't cry for Terrence Howard. They didn't cry for Taraji, but they cried for the other white women. And that's what they do. So women became victims and then all women got lumped into that category. So then it became a victim mentality. The Jews, the Asians, the poor, you know, everyone comes with this victim mentality and it is accepted by Democrats. And that's why people tend to gravitate towards the Democratic Party, because they know that that victim mentality will be accepted. The other thing, too, that why 
our folks, some of our, a certain demographic of our folks gravitate towards um, the Democratic Party, it's because Democrats believe in handouts. And that's just the bottom line. Like I mentioned before, canceling student loans. Every time I talk to a black person, particularly a black person that, that is struggling, they always, you know, talk about, you know, what the government needs to give and what the government needs to, you know, write off and abolish and do this, this, that, and the third. It's canceling student loans, universal income. Now, I will say this in a way with universal income, that may be something that's kind of on the cusp of something potentially because you're going to have to kind of look at how robots and robotics and um, humanoids um, are factoring into things and bots and artificial intelligence. So the Democrats may be kind of on to something with that kind of be, but they may be a little bit ahead of, ahead of their time right now. But it is something that you possibly want to start looking at because they're going to need to have an answer if, if all of these jobs start getting canceled. Um, you know, but then also to bail out, you know, you know, whether whatever, you know, when we had the crash in 09, you know, when you had COVID, everything wanted to be a bailout of PPP, this, this, that, and the third. They believe in just funneling money um, to any and everyone. And that's what the Democrats really, are. well, to any and everyone that's not rich. And that's also, too, a part of why people gravitate towards Democrat because Democrats think that they're going to give poor people a bunch of money and all poor people are going to do is go and spend it. A rich person is probably at least going to, you know, um, invest that money and make himself richer, herself richer, or they're going to employ people to get the economy moving. Poor person isn't going to do that. They're more than less likely. Let me put it that way. They're more than less likely not to do that. Um, our black people also gravitate towards um, the Democratic Party because of um, feminism and how the Democrats support feminism. You know, just what you see uh, all of the legislation, you know, with Plan B pills, um, pregnancy terminations, the support of pregnancy terminations, you know, blaming men for all of women's problems, you know, vilifying men. You know, that's why you see a lot of people gravitate towards the Democrat Party, a particular, I should say, a certain demographic of black people. I'm just really speaking in terms of black people at, at this point in time. And then finally, you see people gravitate towards the Democratic Party or a certain demographic of blacks gravitating towards the Democratic Party is because um, they don't believe in holding people accountable. Um, particularly to themselves, they know that they don't have to hold anyone else accountable. Everyone doesn't have to hold them accountable. So once again, this kind of goes back to, you know, that whole victim mentality type um, thing where it's kind of at some point in time, I get it. And trust me, I'll be the first person to admit that racism exists. Racism is not going anywhere. Biases exist. There are always going to be um, things in society that hold you back. Um, even if even if all biases, even if racial biases were removed off the table, then you go to pretty privilege because you're going to start seeing with, you know, it's going to be the, the people that look the best that are going to get, you know, the more followers or subscribers. Thus, they're going to be able to generate more money, their content. People flock towards attractive people so there's always going to be some particular type of bias in the world but then it becomes where you got to hold yourself accountable to say well you know we understand that there, there are certain um you know it, there are certain obstacles in your way and we acknowledge those obstacles it's okay to acknowledge those obstacles and call them out but don't become the victim and say, well, I can't do anything because the obstacles there. The only thing you can do is be the best that you can be. You may not get to a particular level, but you can say, hey, look, I I did what was in what I could control. And my example of that is always going to be when you look at the, um, the entertainment industry. You see a lot of entertainers complaining, like I'll use Taraji as an example, you see entertainers complaining, particularly black entertainers, particularly, you know, if you want to even dig down further, it was a black female demographic saying that, you know, we're not paid. And they were talking about the whole color purple thing. But then you have to say to yourself, too, well, if you're not paid properly and you're claiming, Taraji, that you had, you know, you were 
given only a seventy-five or hundred thousand dollars for Benjamin Button, or that was their offer, and then they came up a little bit more off of that. Then you went to this black production, you know, but you know, produced by a white company. I, I don't know what what um, production company was used, but you know, it was definitely you had some black executives in on that. Um, but you know, probably ultimately a white person's decision. But you have to say to yourself, Taraji, and say, well, you know, my name, Taraji Henson, carries itself. And how come it is that I'm stuck? I've been in Hollywood for X, Y, Z years. And this is what I've been experiencing. And I'm continuing to experience this. But then I can look at a person like Country Wayne, Desi Banks, and I can look at a bunch of other YouTubers that are using their platform. And they're saying, well, hey, look, we may not be in Hollywood productions you know, multi-billion dollar, million dollar productions, and we're not walking red carpets and receiving Emmys and Oscars and all of this other stuff, but we're making $2 million a month. We're making a million dollars a month. We're making our money and we're paying, and we have a little small um, crew. You know, what we do, it only takes two or three or four people and we're able to do this type of stuff. So that's why I say that, you know, Sometimes when you hold people accountable and it kind of ties in with the victim mentality too, you can't just sit back and waddle and say, well, somebody needs to pay me more, help me, help me. At some point you have to say, well, if those people aren't going to help me or if those people aren't going to do the right thing with pay equity, then I need to just say, hey, look, it is this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to this different platform. You can even look at Roland Martin as another great example. Roland Martin left, you know, BET shut down his show. And it was due, I think that was due to the fact that, you know, if you look at it, how, how many people are going, were going to BET um, in the morning to get their news when he's competing with CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and then even with like um, Good Day of um, Good Morning America and all of this other stuff. And trust me, I watched Roland. I watched Roland not every morning, but I did watch him when he was on BET. But I understand how that, how his show fell or the ratings fell off and how his show got dropped because that network really wasn't, it can't really be a catch-all. And some network, some black networks become this catch-all and that's what BET became. BET was, you know, we're going to have, like before, before the music got phased out, but they were like, we're going to show videos in the evening. Then we're going to show some movies here. Then we're going to have a, you know, a, um, a kid platform for kids to come and talk and, you know, um, you know, talk about young kid issues. Then we're also going to do the news. You're all over the place. So I, I understand how BET had to streamline and how a show got canceled. But Roland took it and said, OK, well, I got my cameras. I can operate little small cameras. I've been in the business. I've developed contacts in the business. So now I can branch out and I can still do what I do. Now, I may not make the money that I used to make. But I'm still providing a livelihood for my family. And, that, and maybe he's making more. I don't know. You can even also look at Shannon Sharp and his situation. He left Skip Bayless's show. And people were wondering, well, what is he going to do with his life? And, you know, there was all this rumblings about him and Skip not getting along. And, you know, you could kind of see it on the Farewell show where him and Skip really didn't interact. And so he leaves the show and now he does one interview. Everybody knows the interview that happened. And his show is just taking off like a rocket. And now he's monetizing himself. So that's how you counter and that's how you hold yourself accountable. You don't fall into that victim mentality. You hold yourself accountable and you say, I can only do what's in my power to do. And, you know, whatever I make of this, so be it. So that's the those are the reasons why I think certain blacks gravitate towards the Democratic Party. Now, let me do provide this caveat in on this because there is a caveat. Um, the, the, the Republican Party shoots themselves in the foot, too. They, they really do, because anytime you have a party that wants to. And, and like I say, the Democrat does things that are wrong on one particular spectrum. Like, so I'll give an example. The Democrat Party will want to cancel any and everything that, you know, they don't like. You know, if you're if you're not pro trans or pro um, this or pro that, they'll cancel you in a heartbeat. If you're not pro feminism, then you can get canceled easily. Um, you, you see it all the time where well, they they developed cancel culture came out of, 
you know, the, um, the liberals, liberalism. But Republicans do the same game. You know, they're banning books, particularly by black authors. I think the bluest eye was ba um, banned. Um, I don't know if their eyes were watching God were banned, but they're banning black books by black authors. Um, they're, um, if, if you say something that they don't like, they try to get you banned or fired. You look at the black um, female that was the president of Harvard University. Just because she didn't say, um, you know, because she didn't say that she fully supported Israel and she wasn't going to rebuke students and, you know, um, you know, because her remarks didn't align with what Republicans wanted to hear, they started forcing the hands of the school to get her terminated, which she eventually resigned from. So that's no better than what the Democrats do. It's just doing it from a different spectrum. They're trying to rewrite um, the history of particularly when it comes to black history. They want to ban black history from, um, I think, Florida. And then possibly Texas. So these are things that kind of get it where I understand why people kind of just don't go over there and vote because all of those people are they're race deniers. They don't believe in reparations and, and, and rectifying the wrongs that they've done to black people. They think that giving an apology is OK and moving on is OK. And it's not. We need to be financially compensated because we all know that America is built off of capitalism. America isn't built off of, I'm sorry, in, in words, America is built off of money. And so money would rectify the situation. You rectified it with the Asian Americans when you put them in camps. You even somewhat rectified it with the um, Native Americans. You at least don't allow them. They don't even have to pay taxes. And, you know, they get their casinos. Then mind you, they're, you know, they have their challenges with the reservations and stuff, but at least you try to monetarily compensate them. You didn't do anything for us. And you can't say affirmative action is a remedy because affirmative action is I'm going to give you a job and then I'm going to fire you from it. I'm going to give you a job and then I'm going to make your life hell here until you quit. I'm going to give you a job and then, you know, I'm going to just hire you as a secretary and keep you lowball. You don't giving someone a job isn't empowering them. So let's not play games with me. So I understand why people, you know, don't go to the Republican Party. I get it. The Republican Party is um, they're, they're you know, they, if they were a little bit more compassionate to black issues, then I could see, you know, people going to the Republican Party. But these are my reasons why or those were my, I think, what, four or five reasons why. I think that people tend to stick with or a certain demographic of black people. And like I said, those blacks are typically um, blacks that are, you know, low economic income bracket or they're black people that, um, you know, they, they, they just have a financial challenges, whether they're swimming in debt, um, whether they, you know, don't know how to manage their um, finances properly and they wound up in chapter 11, chapter 13, chapter 7, whichever one it is, whatever chapter they want to flip through, they wind up in there. Those are the ones that typically try to support the Democratic Party. And then also, too, like I say, those people that, that are just, you know, you're going to find your, you know, the LGBTQ definitely community in there. You're going to find your feminisms and your feminists in there um, and so forth. So, that's just my observation. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on it. Once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. Leave me some comments. Definitely hit the like and subscribe. I'm out of here.